All right, so I'm going to continue on here. This um, we have a database that we can access through that name, and we can call the collections function on it like this, or just collection rather. And then we give it to so the this this um, fire store is a the database looks like this it starts with a collection of documents you have collections you go to the database and the database is a bunch of collection document collections so you're going to name the document collection that you want to start in so it'll be say users that's the name of the collection oh, there's no slash there and uh, that's the users collection and then from the user's collection, we can access a document with, um, with some name. We're going to call that name, uh, say, Alice. Right? And uh, maybe we'll just call that Alice then. We'll call that Alice. It's the, and it's, it's not actual a document, it's a, do, it's a reference to the documents. I'm going to call it an Alice ref. It's an Alice reference. It's a reference to a document whose name is Alice. And it's in the user's collection. And then <clears throat> we're going to use this... Um, we're going to try to read it. And we want that to fail. So we're going to await the Firebase. So Firebase has these assertions. We want the following operation to fail. If we take Alice ref and we try to get the document, we just want to get the document. I think that's what it looks like. And uh, just going to take a look at that. This is dot set. This is dot get. So I want this to fail. But actually it's going to succeed because our rules are open. So this'll this will fail. And uh, let's see. So this is describing this is the first test. So I'm gonna close that and we'll make it look like this. Alright. So actually, I should be able to just run that and um, see what happens. So normally we've got to run these uh, emulators, but what, what we could do, we could just run the Firestore emulator. We could do emulator start only Firestore. And we could do it like that. This will start only the Firestore emulator. So we don't run the, the web server. Starting emulators, Firestore, just one emulator. So this command here starts the Firestore emulator. And then what we could do is we can run a command. We can run the Mocha command after starting that emulator. That'll run the test. And there's not, nothing, nothing being printed out. So let's do this. Would be a wait. Uh, nothing. There's no printing, right? So topic doesn't look right. Firestore Mocha. So what is going on there? It says passing. I don't get it. When we run it like this, we don't even have the emulator running and it says, it says passing. Oh no, it's, it's a huge uh, unhandled exception in there. Fire only, Firebase emulators, only Firestore. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Now remember, I got the wrong command. It's exec. There we go. Starts the emulators. See? Starts the emulators right here. Starting emulators. Firestore. Running script Mocha. And this is the Firestore rules test. See that? Firestore rules test. So this is... This is a, a group of tests. And uh, the first test is that non-authenticated users can access nothing. Non-authenticated users can access nothing. So this get should fail. But it doesn't. Non-authenticated user can access nothing. No. It was supposed to fail, but it succeeded. And the reason is the Firestore rules are open everything up. So this is allow read write if false. Let's do it like that. It means never allow a read or write. So now when I run the test, it should succeed. And there it is. Firestore rules test, one passing, two seconds. I wonder why this doesn't stop. I have to control C. There's something wrong with my code. Where is it? This is uh, async describe. Why doesn't that um, terminate? Let me think. Constant. Uh, I got these things here after. So, not sure why it doesn't just terminate on me there. Something is holding it up. So, Let's see. I uh, wonder why it doesn't just terminate on me. All right. So what about we're going to have another test? And here's the authenticated users can access their own doc. Own user doc, I'll say. And uh, so here's the Alice ref. All right. But now what we want to do is we want to authenticate with the uh, UID equal to Alice. And the name, I think it's, uh, oh, the email, they, they want email as well, but I'm gonna leave the email out. I think that's good enough. So we're gonna authenticate as a user whose username is Alice. So now this collection here I want to be able to access this document and this access when I, this is where the route, we can always create a reference, but we can't like execute the route. We can't dereference it. We call get to dereference the reference and just to go get the thing that the reference refers to. <coughs> this is where the success or failure should happen. Is it success or failure? Let's succeeds, succeeds. So this should succeed, but it will not succeed now because uh, it will not succeed now because the, the rules are to allow nothing. 
So we're going to see this fail. And by the way, I can do it. This, this, this command here. I can put it into, this is some fanciness, this is not totally optional. For the, ta for the script, we can just run that. That's our test script. So if I run npm test, it'll execute that line. And you'll see that one failed. Uh, authenticated users can access their own user doc. Reference error. Alice not defined. Oh. And one is failing and one is passing. They don't show the... Oh, non-authenticated users can access nothing. That passed. But this one, authenticated users can access own user doc. That one failed. Once again, I have to control C on that. I don't know why. Uh, so what we got to do here, two things. Well, one, one thing, it did give this Alice is not defined reference error. Hmm. I think because it's not in the database, but that shouldn't. Yeah, Alice is not defined. It's the Alice ref right there, right? Alice is not defined. It says Alice is not defined, a reference error. Well, this gives a line number, 17. I'm not sure, maybe I'm on the wrong line. Wait a minute, I'll save this. Run that again. Line 19. All right, where is line 19? 19 is right there. Alice is not to... up. Oh, there it is. Alice not defined. It looks like a variable name. This should be a string. All right. Oops. We shouldn't have that reference error anymore, but it should still fail. Okay, let's see. Uh, false. Authenticated users can access their own doc. False for get. Right? So there we go. Now, whoops, caps lock on there. If we do this, this doesn't allow anything. So what we can do after that is Add some more rules and give some more chances to uh, to match. So this is the user's collection. And we have the, remember inside user with this user documents. And it, they, they simply are given the name of their user IDs. All right, of the user IDs, Alice for instance. So, If we match, so let me see if I can remember how to do this. Oh. So it's allow, read, and write. It allowed both. If the request object, which has an auth object, 
which has a user ID in it. A UID, I think. So we're going to allow the read and the write if the user ID and the auth object of the request equals this user ID right there. So we're going to allow read and write if the UID, the user ID, unique ID, I guess, of this auth object that's inside the request object. So this request object is just predefined when this, you know, it's something that we can simply refer to. This is like JavaScript here, you know, that, that, we, that condition. Uh, all right, let's see if that works. And it works. So the test is working. And notice that in order to check this test, um, let me do this. One, two, three, four. Let's try this. Authenticated users cannot access other user docs and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna authenticate as Alice but here for instead of the Alice ref we're gonna have a Bob ref and then We're going to see if we try to do the get on the Bob ref, that should fail. So this should fail. All right. So this operation should fail. And this will catch it, make sure that it fails. If it doesn't fail, then the test will fail. All right, let's try that one. And there we go three tests they're all passing one two three three passing tests this is the hard part when you're using firestore the hardest part of it in my opinion is getting these security rules figured out correctly and you know you might throw together some rules and say there i got it but actually there can be some subtle problems with your rules and I think it is kind of an industry problem it is a problem with Firebase that people are not getting their security rules set up correctly and so there's a lot of security problems security holes in Firebase apps right now in the marketplace so that's my understanding based on the reading I've been doing like in um, you know the in the in the news groups and so on, uh, forums, the people talking about this stuff. That's what it seems like. All right. Now, we, we may want to add some more rules, but I'll leave it alone for now. Also, we can write things into the database and actually retrieve things. But um, I'm going to leave it at this uh, for now. I, I think I'm just going to leave it like that for now. So that's our testing. And uh, I'm just going to capture all this. And uh, there we go. I'll push it later, just in case I decide to abandon everything. All right, so now we need to um, get this working in the app. So 
we'll go back into public. We'll look in there. You'll see that's b.js is where all the action is here. This is where we're going to be writing into the database. So this, uh, there is, um, let's see, how am I going to do this? I kind of remember how to do it. You know, just to save time, I'll go ahead and, and uh, go quickly. If you go into save here, I'm going to look at what I did. Yeah, this thing here. I'm going to have to explain this. And uh, this is when the login happens. So I'm going to uh, copy this and explain it. Uh, what is going on here? So when we get notified that the user is logged in, then this function runs. And we set the view block, the view div to, to display block, and that becomes visible. And enable the edit button and so on. And then what we do is we we get the the firebase.auth firebase.auth gives us the sort of this auth object which has a current user field and the current user field has a uid in it and we pull the uid out and store it here as a user id and then we're going to look at a collection called users and we're going to reference the the doc in there that has the name equal to the authenticated user ID. So that's our user ref. And now this user reference, you know, when we create a user reference, we don't hit the database. We're just creating like a, a pointer to it. And we don't even know if it exists or not. So we can create a, a reference to something that doesn't exist. We can do that. And um, so here's the reference. What we're going to do in the reference is we're going to call on snapshot. So on, this user reference has an on snapshot method that we're going to call. And this is if the, the snapshot is like a picture of the state of an object and the, or a document. The reference, this is a document reference. So you think of documents as like JavaScript objects or JSON objects. And uh, the snapshot is whatever its current state is, right? Now on snapshot, that means the registering to get a, a, the snapshot. We want a snapshot of when, when this reference becomes available or when this document, when the, when the referred to document becomes available or when the referred to document changes then this on snapshot will be called, not on snapshot, because we're calling on snapshot, but the callback that we pass into on snap on snapshot, this is our listener, our listener will be called. And when our listener is called, then snapshot is passed in, the snapshot is passed in here. We take that up with the name snapshot. If the snapshot exists, then uh, you see it's possible for it to, we have a user reference and there's no document that it refers to. Okay, that would be the case of else here if the snapshot doesn't exist. Snapshot exists means oh there is a document there. Oh, okay, if it doesn't exist it means oh there's no document. So if there's no document, what we're going to do is we're going to write. Um, we're just going to write an empty string. Maybe we'll write a blank in there. I'll just say, um, I'll just put in the word note. Say my note. So enter note, enter note here. Uh, my note, whatever. And uh, 
this I'm not going to look at. So set, this means to create the user. This, this is, oh, I want to make, call that a note, by the way. I want to create a user object that simply has one attribute in it, just a note attribute set to a string. Now, if the snapshot already exists, then what I want to do is access the data in that document. So I use this data here. Actually, I don't think I need to call it as a function. I'm not sure about that. And um, this is the um, the note field. That's what I created here. See? So we pulled a note out and we write it into this um, B, I think I called it B view message, no, B view note. Can't remember now. Let's look at it. So it's B view note right here. This is going to be replaced with the what comes from the database. This is B view note. Let me go back to this one. So this, uh, where's B view note? Here it is. I will be replaced. So we might be able to see this for a second and then it'll be replaced by what it gets from the database. Whoops. So, so if the snapshot exists, after we log in state happens, then uh, we set the inner text of this div to the user's note. And uh, that'll be that. I'm just going to shorten this up. I'm going to go into my save. And this is that business right there. It's this here. When the save button is clicked, we don't have to worry about cancel button. That just means don't do anything. When the save button is clicked, then we want to write into the database. So we're going to go down into the save button. Here it is. All right. I just put it like this. So we do a similar operation. We get the user ID. Just kind of clean that up a little. I find that easier to read when I do it like this. It's just a lot of setting of, um, of values here. To, remember, every time you change a value, you're changing the state of something. You're taking, changing the state of the whole application. I'm going to change a single value. So here we're changing the state of several parts of the total state. And then here we have um, the user ID. Remember, we get it in the same way from this auth object. And then we create the, uh, the reference to the user's uh, document. And then we uh, update, we'll change the note. I called it message before. I'll change the note to what do we have in here? This should be, is that note? It's the value from the text area, text area element. So is the text area element called B edit note? Let me see. Text area element is right here. Is it B edit note? Yes, it is. There it is, B edit note. It says hello right now, but that's uh, 
Shouldn't be hello, it should be something else. This should not be here. We should probably initialize that to, um, this should be initialized to what's in the, what's up here? Up here, this, this right here. This is this B view. Uh, what is it? Oh, here. B edit note. That's it right there. This B edit note, right? That's the, the version of the note that can be edited. See, this is the, uh, and I'm going to take this out of B view note. I think that's what I called it here, right? B view note, inner text is set to snapshot data dot note. B view note dot inner text to pull that value out and copy it into B edit note. So, uh, so we have that div that shows the note. And then when we go to edit the note, we have a text area that should be initialized to this, to the text that's in the, in the note that we're viewing. All right. Okay. This could do it right here. I wonder if that's going to work. Let's see. So how do we test this? It'll be, you know, Firebase emulators. Start. I think that's it. Emulators, starting emulators, Firestore, and hosting. So we're getting them both. And now we're going to uh, going to take a look. You know, I never used to do this, and I uh, wonder what's going on. Let me see if this will work for me. No, you know, firebase.firestore is not a function. A.login. B, line 6. You see that right there? B.js, line 6. You know, when I restart... Firebase not a function. So the, I'm going to check that anyway. Let's see. B line six. It says Firebase is not a function. Firebase. Well, yeah, well. Firebase dot Firestore is not a function. Yeah, fi oh, remember I said I wasn't sure about that? Oh, no, that should be a function. Firebase.firestore is not a function. Hmm. That is odd. Why would that not be a function? I don't get that. I'm going to try loading this again. I don't get this. Let me do I'm going to start this again. I don't get all that. I think that, yeah, we'll just leave it like this. that local storage I right, want to go to here and all right there's nothing going on there firebase.firestore is not a function 
I got something wrong there. Firestore is not a function. So auth is a function, but firestore is not a function? Firebase.firestore is not a function. Why is that not a function? I think that... Um, Oh, it's not a function because we didn't load the library. See? All right. I'm going to put it right in here. This is Firebase. There we go. Syntax error. It's not Firebase, it's Firestore. Oh, no errors. Look, oh, that's great. All right, so we're in here. And this is my note. Look at this. And we edit the node, and this is, I'll say, not my note. Save changes, not my note, look at that. Edit note, CCC, cancel. Not my note, edit note, CCC. Save changes, there it is. So it looks good if we log out. And then uh, we're going to log back in again. I'm going to get rid of that one. There it is. We log back in and there it is. The CCC, the not my note CCC. There it is. So. I mean, that's it. Oh, yeah. Let's do a little more. We can deploy. Let's deploy. I'm going to kill this. So let me do get status first. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, commit that. And then uh, I'm going to do Firebase deploy. I'm going to get that out there. And uh, here's the URL. This is the public app. We just deployed it. Should have the new functionality in it. All righty. We're gonna put the uh, put this on. Let's get the email link. Put this on. Everything is clean here. I wonder if it looks all right here. Oh, look. Now it's working. Now I'm not getting that glitch. Don't know what was going on with that. All right. All right, here we go. So, uh, wait a minute. This is all in the... Uh, I'm still in localhost here. What the heck? This is not right. I am in uh, this one here. This is the one I want. This is, uh, and look, why my, I thought I was working with test data, so I don't know why that would be in my, I thought I was running the Firestore locally. So, you know, this is, this is my public, uh, my deployed, my deployed node, I'll say. It's not actually public. It's my deployed node. And, um, I wonder if I, 
If I reload that, what happens? Everything is good. But I'm confused. Uh, I thought that my uh, my data. This is my remote. So actually, you can look at your data here. See, this is the database, and this is the data section. Here's users. Here's my deployed note. There it is. You can actually edit this in here. And uh, my my new deployed node, and watch this. My new deployed node, I'll come over here. My new deployed node, is that cool? And that's because the uh, we listen here for changes to that snapshot. And that uh, when that snap, snap, snapshot changes, then, you know, then we see the new, the new version of it. So this, this is excellent. This is where Firebase is really fantastic. The security rules are a nightmare, but when it comes to listening for changes to snapshots and things like that, this is going to save you a lot of time and simplify things. All right, so the, my last thing I want to do is figure out why, why am I getting this here? And I want to run my database locally. I want to, um, I want to uh, start the emulator and just run it locally. I want local. So I start the emulator here. Watch this. I'm even going to log out of there. Missing insufficient permissions to log out. So. There's some bugs in the code, so it's got to get looked at. This is the localhost 5000. Look, my new deployed node, it's pulling the data from the remote database. I thought it was running a local instance, so I don't understand what's going on. Uh, I don't get it. Why? I want. I want my local database to be different from remote database. See, look at that. I put that in the remote server. And so obviously I'm connecting to the remote database, not a test. So I, I don't understand. I thought I had this figured out that I could keep things um, just on the local machine, but apparently that's, I know the auth, when you do authentication, you can't just do it on the local machine. You gotta involve um, remote servers for that. But when you're working with the database, I think that uh, you can keep it. Let's do a quick search on that. How Firestore is oh I remember now son of a gun now I remember all right maybe I should have gone back into there let me show that to you now I remember uh, so I go to rules here develop and test uh, look at the quick start and oh it's not in here not in here it's uh gonna have to look at the other code well, i want to show it to you where i got it from the web but um, this is getting long so i'm gonna i'm just gonna do the quick way And what was it? Where was that thing? That was in a.js. And uh, this is it right here. That's the missing piece of code. Uh, 
and this is in um, A. So once the document is loaded, then uh, I'm going to do this. If the, see the window location, that's this, see, this is the window location right there. Uh, let me prove it to you. I open up the JavaScript console and I'm going to do uh, window.location.hostname window.location.hostname github.com there it is so if the host is localhost, in other words, if we're accessing the local host here, where is it? Right there. If we're accessing local host, then the Firestore, which has already been configured, we're going to change its settings so that the host to connect to is port 8080 of localhost and don't use secure shell so when it's what it was doing before I put this code in here was connecting to the remote host and it was using SSL of course which is important when you're on the internet and uh, what did I want to say about that that's it so that gets that in there So now, if we restart the emulator, all right, I want my little bit da database to be different from my remote database. To remember, I modified my data here to appear in my running application, this one here. Did I reload this? I want to reload it. Oh, I will be replaced. My note. There it is. So it's no longer getting um, the data from here. Now it's getting it from the local uh, database. All right. That solves that problem. And uh, let me go ahead and commit. See if I can think of anything else. And finally, I'm going to push this. I know it's a long video, two of them. Sorry about getting being so slow, but you know, I want to show you show you, I guess, how I deal with problems. If it's of use to you, I don't know. But uh, we got everything running, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. So um, I'm going to close it there. I can't think of anything else to say. Maybe I'll look down here real quick. And uh, yeah, lots of stuff here. So I mean, I did a lot of work on this, so it takes a long time to learn this. And uh, this is some record of what I did. And that's just what I want to look at in the future. React Native, Firebase with React Native, I think this is going to be great. And uh, more on React. And then there's a sample React Native uh, Firebase project. So these are things I'm going to be looking into. Disk is almost 